Okay. Uh, so uh, the question number three was interesting. It says that we have an environment, and these are four mechanisms that we have our disposal. We may not need all of them. Okay. Uh, so, and the, here's the behavior. The behavior is that the sender to receiver channel can corrupt and can lose packets. <coughs> the receiver to sender is perfect. So we don't lose any data or we don't corrupt it. So find the minimum uh, protocol, the smallest protocol that can do the job for us. Okay. And here is the answer. Here is one answer. And, <coughs> and another restriction was that if you put some uh, functionalities, you know, some of those mechanisms that we don't need, then you, you would lose points. So here is uh, the, your sender would need two states. One of them is wait. You, see, uh, you, you start from here. You receive your uh, data from application. Okay, so what you do is that you put a first of all it is a stop and wait. We go one by one. It's not a multiple. It's not, it is not a pipeline protocol. <coughs> okay, so we put a packet together with the data. We put the checksum. We don't put the sequence number. We don't need the sequence number. Okay, because. On this side, we don't, uh, on the sender to the receiver, we don't lose packets. Then we uh, put this packet in the, in the buffer, we send it, and we start the timer. We said that the delay was d seconds. So we put a timer that is twice that, it's round trip time. Okay. Now, the retransmission is only done due to timeout. Okay? If the timeout pops out, we retransmit and we restart the timeout. And we receive we do that again and again until we receive a packet and is an acknowledgement. And notice that uh, any packet that we receive is an acknowledgement. <coughs> At that time we stop the timer and we go here. Okay? Uh, so that is for the sender. For the receiver, the receiver is very simple. If we receive a packet, it's not corrupt. We send, extract uh, the data, we deliver it, and then we send an acknowledgement. Anything else that we receive, we don't do anything. Anything else, which means that the packet, any other event, we receive a packet that is, is corrupt, we don't do anything. We just keep waiting. And, ah. So that was the uh, thing. Uh, for, for the benefit of Soraya, this is the answer to first uh, question number three. I don't know if you solved it or not. So the idea was that the sender can send, uh, when it sends data to the receiver, it, the packets may get lost, or it may, may they may get corrupted. Okay, on the receiver side, uh, <coughs> anything that is sent from the receiver to the sender comes intact. There is no corruption. There is no loss. So, what is the minimal protocol that does the job? And this is the protocol. You receive a data. You put a packet together. There is no sequence number. There is no need for sequence number. Okay and you send the packet and start the timer. The timer, a second. Uh, the duration should be twice the delay. Yes, Jessica. Why didn't you need a sequence number? Because uh, I don't, uh, anything that I receive is correct. Oh, it's already in order? Yeah, it's in order. And anything that I receive is correct. I deliver that. Is there any chance of duplicate receiving of the receiver? Is there any chance? I'm asking you the question. There is no chance. As such, I don't need sequence number. Anything that I receive correct, I deliver, and I know that there is no retransmission because of this. 
that is the maximum uh, delay that I have put. The maximum delay was d seconds. So the timer of 2d makes sure that I have given enough time for the packet to get there. If I send you a packet, I don't hear anything from you in 2d, I know there is something wrong. So I will retransmit. Question? No. So, this is the, sorry, this is the, uh, I go to wait, I send the packet, go to wait, the timer pops out, I restart the timer, retransmit, restart the timer with so much delay. And then, uh, finally, hopefully, I will receive an acknowledgement. And I stop the timer, and I can t take care of the next packet. I don't need sequence number here. Okay? And the, on the receiver side, I keep waiting. <coughs> Any packet that is good, I am guaranteed that is the, the first copy of the packet. I deliver it. And I send an acknowledgement immediately. This acknowledgement will definitely get to the sender because there is no corruption and there is no uh, error on the way back. So, so it's very simple. Okay. Some of you had four states, some of you this, that, that's the very simple. Okay. Uh, another question that was interesting was uh -huh, here. We on on selective repeat SRP. We said that. At the receiver side, this is time. So, so this is the window of packets that I am waiting to receive. Okay, and if I receive packets on this one, I will process them, deliver upstairs. If they are in order, I will deliver upstairs, send acknowledgement, and then shift it forward. If I receive a packet that is one window behind me, I have to send acknowledgement. I don't deliver it because I have already delivered them. But I have to send acknowledgement to the sender. If I don't do that, the protocol goes into deadlock. Question? So, and my, the question was that, Show that. We give an example that this can happen. Okay? And I think one or two people answered this correctly. And here is an example. Here's an example. Uh, so, I have, my window is two, and sequence number I don't you know, is infinite, it's, it's immaterial. My window is two. I send first packet, second packet. And this window is two. So this is what I expect. I receive it, deliver it, shift my window. And send acknowledgement. Sometimes later I receive the second packet, send acknowledgement and shift it. So I am sitting here. Okay? And the first acknowledgement gets zapped. So I don't receive the first acknowledgement. So my window is stuck here. The second acknowledgement comes here, which is fine, but can I shift my window? I cannot because this packet is, I'm waiting for it. So the timer pops out, I retransmit. So, I return here is a packet that I received this acknowledgement for this guy. It's out of my window. If the protocol doesn't tell me to send acknowledgement back and I drop it, then I'm stuck here, you're stuck here, and protocol doesn't proceed. So here's an example that you have to send acknowledgement if you receive for one window behind. 
Right. So this is uh, one example. Any question? That's only with the selective That's for a selective repeat. That's for a selective repeat. Okay. And if you recall, within the class, I went, I gave this example also. You recall that. Which means that during the lecture, don't fall asleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, second question was that we are using go back n. We are using go back n. And go back n, what was the relationship between the span of sequence number and window size? Do you remember? If I had. Hmm? Uh, that was for selective repeat. For go back n, if my span of sequence number is n, then my window should be n minus 1 or less. Which means that, for example, if I have 3 bits, 3 bits, how many sequence numbers does it give me? Stan, with 3 bits, how many sequence numbers do I have? I have 3 bits in the header. How many sequence number do I have? Uh, Maggie? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> to do three equal to eight. Yeah. If you go to into networking, you should be really comfortable with the uh, binary numbers. You should be very comfortable with the numbers. Now, when we go to into IP addressing, <laughs> what happened? Did, oh, you, no, did, did you spill? Did you spill? <laughs> no, that's what I originally thought I did. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, we have eight, eight sequence numbers. So the, the maximum window size should be seven. Cannot be here. So my and the question says, and this question says, if we violate this, give an example, and I didn't put any limitation on the bit numbers. Give an example that if we don't follow this rule, then we run into trouble. The easiest example is to have a sequence, a two bit, <coughs> if you have n equal to one, okay, so how many sequence numbers do I have? With n equal to 1? One. 2. 2. 0 and yeah. 1. So, going to be one. so window size, in the in RDT example that we had in the book, the window size, only stop and, stop and go. What is the window size? 1. I send 1 packet, wait. 1 packet, wait. Oh, that works. So let's put it window size equal to 2. Let's see whether it works or not. Okay, so I have one bit, two sequence numbers, my window size is two. Okay, here is two. So I send packet number one, packet number two, it sequence, uh, it is in the uh, deliberate, packet number one, packet number two, acknowledgement is zapped, this acknowledgement is received. Okay, now, when I receive this acknowledgement, I cannot shift my window. Okay, so I will read. So here, what is the sequence number that I'm waiting for? The first one, yeah. zero. Because everything was, you know, from my point of view. Uh, the second zero. Yeah, there's a second zero. Yes, that's pa packet number three. In fact, okay. So everything seems kosher to me. So if I receive a packet with sequence number zero, I would think that this packet is packet number three. Okay, and here it is. The retransmission, this first packet comes here, and you say, oh, this is a healthy packet, I'm waiting, for, that's sequence number zero. I'm waiting for sequence number zero, I will deliver it upstairs. So, we have delivered duplicate packets, protocol breaks down. So, because... Why are you not delivering duplicate ones? Say it again. You delivering duplicate yeah, I'm delivering, because here, when I received packet number one, I delivered it. Oh, so, yes. Oh. 
Here is a very simple another packet which is healthy, but it's not packet number packet three. It's packet one. I deliver it, so I violated that. So there is something wrong here. Okay. So that was uh, that was uh, uh, this one, and and uh, th uh, this true and false. I think you all followed that. Any question on those true true and false? But one of them is, some of them are tricky, sort of. Let's, let's look at that. Uh, so, host A is sending uh, a large file over a TCP connection. Assume host B has no data to send to host A. B will not send acknowledgement to host A because B cannot piggyback the acknowledgement of data. So the idea is that, so between on TCP, sender and receiver, you send data, and you, you can acknowledge, send acknowledgement to the other side. Now, you send me something, and I don't have data to send you back. Then, do I hold on to my acknowledgement, or what do I do? And the idea is that I send you an acknowledgement without data. Okay, and that's the question. That's the question. <coughs> So, of course, this is, you know, there's a one thing, the question is the following. I'm using, I'm requesting a web page. It has a base page and three pictures. Okay? And the question is that uh, the client sends one request, and now after the first request, I get everything back. And that is, of course, false, because I get the base and then send request for each object, depending on whether it is uh, one request or pipeline or not. But I have to send more requests. This one. Uh, and this is true also. The uh, host uh, A is sending host B a large file over TCP connection. The number of unacknowledged bytes that A sends cannot exceed the size of the receiver buffer. That's very true. Okay. And by the way, this receiver buffer is the one that shifts back and forth. And that is where flow control comes into picture. Okay. Now, this one is, at least I know one person who had problem with that. Then there's a question. I am sending one segment. I'm sending two segments, okay? This segment, the sequence number, equal to M. Now, the question is that the sequence number of this guy is M plus one. Is it true or false? <laughs> of course. What is and okay, this is false. It cannot be the M1. What can it be? What is the sequence number on this one? Joe? M plus one. That's true. If this is L, this is M plus L. Okay? So this is this one. Uh, last one. Number five is is it possible for an application to enjoy reliable data transfer even when the application runs over UDP? Mia? Yes. yes. An example. Give me an example. How, 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 how do we do that? You just said yes without knowing that. You <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, I think I said me at he and he said yes <laughs> to my answer rather than answer to the question. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's ask Jessica. Uh, is the, is it true or false? Okay, give me an example. Explain, explain. What does that mean? What what's the question is asking? Let's ask Nana. No. 
Sraya, you should be able to answer with this. The, the, okay, so the answer is true. This is true. Uh, the idea is that UDP is unreliable, the application needs reliability. So if the transport doesn't provide it, the application should do it itself. It's like TFTP. TFTP is a reliable application for file transfer, sitting on top of UDP, which is unreliable. So TFTP does have acknowledgement within the application. Okay. Now, this guy. Suppose that the, you remember those, that is, these are the mechanisms that we use to find the timeout. So sample RTT is the instantaneous delay. The sample RTT in a TCP connection is equal to one second. Okay? The current value of timeout value for the connection will be necessarily larger than one. Is that false or wrong? True. Yeah. False. What, what should be, well, why is it false? So it can be equal to one. It can be greater than one, but it can well, be No, no, it can be anything. I don't know. There was a formula that says that uh, time out equal to sample RTT multiplied by alpha plus one minus alpha times uh, the current time out. Okay? It all depends on those parameters. It can be higher, it can be lower. It doesn't have any, any, okay, it's not necessarily true. Okay? Now, this one says that I'm sending a segment of uh, four bytes, and sequence number is 38. So this is sequence number. So acknowledgement should be 42. Is it true? Yes. You are right. Why is it false? Because acknowledgement is for the data that I receive from you. It can be anything. You might, the receiver might have sent me 105 correctly received bytes. If that is the case, then the acknowledgement should be 106. That gives me, the acknowledgement gives the index of the next byte that I expect from the receiver. Sequence number is the sequence number of the bytes that I am sending you. So, this plus this doesn't have anything to do with my acknowledgement number. Capish? Good. Okay. Uh, Jessica, well, when you were gone, we decided that I'd like to stop here. First of all, I have a back, uh, back problem. So, tomorrow night, please do check your email. And if my back gets worse, we may have to cancel the Saturday class. I hope not. But if I cannot walk, then I cannot walk. But I hope not. I'm feeling better. But let's stop now, and then we start talking about addressing on Saturday. Okay? What's that? 9.30. 9.30. Okay. Very good.